Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. program until midnight tonight on the east coast of the united states joining us from yet another state that has a high rate of infection in fact it's at uh, i think the nine in uh, 53 percent i think infection rate in nevada this is stephen pearl ladies and gentlemen from las wages i hear around her neck she wore a yellow ribbon I, i'm the heir apparent to mitch miller so we're just going to sing old songs your body used to sing while he was drunk da, 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 da. you know it's funny people who watch you and i together it's like they're in another world. Yeah, they don't yeah. know. When we mentioned Mitch Miller. How many out there, raise your hands, even remember that idiot, that moron, that jerk? Okay, jerk. Mitch Miller. He made it in so He's a jerk. Who this was a guy who ruined Sinatra's career at Columbia. Oh, yeah. By making him do more. novelty songs. Uh, sure. What was it called? A Mama Can Bark with Dagmar that they made, <laughs> made him do? Because he loved novelty records. He okay. said, oh, novelty records what sell. Okay. He rock and roll, too. And he was the head that. of what they call A&R, and these are the guys that choose the songs you do and choose, yeah. you know, they, they, oh, they're yeah. your bosses if you're a performer. Yeah. Those bosses, right. And uh, Mitch Miller was just the worst, man. He yeah. just he just ruined Columbia Records. How much is that doggy in the window was his idea of a good time. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, my God. He had some kind of love with dogs or something. Or something. Uh, 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 uh. He produced the Charlie Parker album or played on it, too. Park, Charlie Parker with strings. And uh, Charlie yeah. Parker with strings. There, yeah, I make I'm, my I, I rest my case. Okay, why do let's you put Charlie Parker with strings? Let's, let's make it something like Charlie would play if he was. Let's take one of the greatest jazz artists of all time <laughs> and let's uh, I don't know get the Ray Conniff singers behind him. <laughs> the Johnny Man singers stand up and barf. Yeah. So for people who don't know who what we're talking about, we're talking about a guy who really pretty much. Tried to tried to ruin Sinatra's career, and yeah, Sinatra finally left Columbia after that. And yep. His career was they thought it was over, but yeah. then he went to Capitol. Yep. And Capitol said, "Do whatever you want," and he did whatever he wanted, and he became a big star, bigger than he ever was, even when the girls were screaming at him. Oh yeah, sure, sure. You know. He grew into being Frank really well. Yeah, he grew into being Frank. That's yeah. really, really a uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, well, when he went to Capitol, he changed his whole persona. You know, he wasn't that skinny guy wearing no. that frilly tie. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, you know. sure, yeah. Uh, and and uh, having girls scream, he just got rid of that. Put uh, on the you know the the uh, the the hat that he used to wear. Swing cat, baby. Swing cat. Swing cat. Yeah. And then he won the Academy Award, and that that gave him all the confidence in the world he needed. So he yep. was he was back. Yep, he did that. I got the well, I got the world on a string. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm back, baby. Don't he, stop me. I can kill people again. You, so you know that story oh, that yeah, he did. Sure. He did. Uh, I got the world on a string, and he didn't. Uh, he he thought Billy May was going to be running the session and had uh -huh. done the arrangement. Because that's what they had said he was going to. But May couldn't be there, and the arrangement was done by this kid who worked for Dorsey at one time called Nelson Riddle. Yep. And, yep. and he did it, and they did the song. And right after the session, I always hear him saying it after I hear the song. When uh -huh. the last note hit and it was through and they had finished recording, his next words were, I'm back. Uh-huh. You know? After that, he said, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and I wouldn't yeah. even get arrested, baby. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was Trump. People. I can eat puppies. That I'm was Frank, Trump. Baby. That was Trump. Forget it. That was <laughs> okay. Trump. I thought it was Frank. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Frank could have, but the yeah, point yeah. was, 
or he could have them killed on Fifth Avenue. Throwing them through a plate glass window, but if I pay for the glass, I'm Frank, baby. I can do anything I want. Whoa! But, but he he just he he did that arrangement, and then he said, "I'm back." I'm, oh, you know, he knew that he had found his voice again. Yep. You know, and that was a great arrangement too. It was. It still holds up beautifully today. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You know. Yep. Uh, uh, folks, if you haven't listened to Sinatra, you know you're missing, you're missing out on perfect music. Check it out. It's something there, there is a point in his life where he was so perfect, nothing. There was just it was pure perfection. Yep. I would he say was it was perfect. in the. I would say the fifties, into yep. the sixties. Yeah, into the, the mid to late sixties, he was. He was the, the, there, was, back, there, was, was cool. yeah. there was. There was. Yeah. There was this perfection, and you listen to it, and you go, "My God, you know." Yep. Just amazing. Yep, exactly. If the nightingale could sing like you, they swing much sweeter than you does. <laughs> kind of love to Frank. Well, you know that he would he would screw around with lyrics. Yeah. Right. You know, he, the only lyrics he wouldn't screw around with were Cole Porter's because one time he did, and Cole Porter laid into him. Because well, in those yeah. days they knew all the writers and everything. He knew Cole Porter. And Porter said, don't you ever change a single word of my lyrics. And yeah. you listen to any Cole Porter song done by Sinatra, he's being a good boy. Except the later versions of the kick out of you because he stopped saying some. They may go for cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Some like the perfumes of Spain. I, yeah. I don't know if he did that with Cole's permission no. or not. Or well, no, I get no kick from cocaine. Your yeah. alcohol doesn't thrill me at all, but I get a kick out of you. And I think at some point, it was just every time it was played, they, he did, Cole Porter, I don't think, minded it being changed because, you know, at that time, cocaine finally had a bad reputation. Hey, yeah. right, wait, it's killing people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or it's, you know, there was, it was given. So I think Sinatra did change it, but what do they change it to? They usually, they always, I, I get no, uh, I get no thrill. Like on a uh, plane, I think something like, like the perfumes uh, of Spain, and then he's saying something like the Bob Tight refrain or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it could have been that, in fact, Cole Porter rewrote that lyric. Yeah, hey, Frank, uh, Coke big, hey, you know, Belushi, let's, let's change it. But, uh, you know, I mean, to have the guy who wrote the song tell you, sing it right, you yeah. know, really. <laughs> I do with my wooden leg, you son of a bitch. Yeah, well. Uh, you know, as I say, I only saw Sinatra perform once, and it was uh -huh. kind of sad. It was towards the end of his career. Yeah. So the night Jilly had just died, uh, best friend. Yeah. Frank Jr. was running the band, <laughs> and uh, he was positively terrible. You know, I mean, he yeah. just, uh, every now and then he would hit a note just right, and the spotlight would hit him just right, and you go, okay, that's Sinatra. Yep. You know, there you go. But I mean, uh, I, 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 what was it? I have, I have a recording of him in Milan, uh, in maybe the eighties, and uh -huh. he does. I get. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, what is the song? It's a Cole Porter song, "Night and Day." Night and day. And he starts off by going "Night and Day." You know how you're supposed to sing his way. You are yeah. the one. He. Is so off key. Ooh. The notes are so bad, and oh. he's croaking it out. I've got a recording of him the next night in Milan, and he's perfect. Wow. And I think he had a he was at that age he was starting to lose it, but he, some nights he had it and some nights he didn't. Yeah. Well, I got him on a night he didn't. Yeah, well, you know, there you go. And and then he put the cigarette out on the stage, and because the stage at the Circle Star Theater was a rug, it caught fire. <laughs> Frank's on and fire. And Frank's in his next song, and he's walking yeah. through smoke, oddly enough. <laughs> and and finally, Frank Jr. says, "Dad, the the, the, the stage is on fire." <laughs> And he looks down and he notes that it is on fire where he put out the cigarette. And so he, I'm hot, he, baby, I'm hot. Because what happened was he threw it down on the rug and then he missed the cigarette, oh. right? And then thought he was putting it out. 
one of those nights. Well, I'd pay to see Sinatra set a place on fire. Yeah. So he went back and put it out. But, I mean, but it was just sad. And then I thought he was looking at me when he was singing. I'm going, why is he staring at me? Because I was I, Tom Dreesen, who was his opening act, right, yeah, said, Tom. "Come on down, see Sinatra." I went, "I'm not turning that down, right? Yeah, I'll introduce that. you to Sinatra. We'll go backstage and I'll introduce you to Sinatra." And then when I got there, he said, "Well, we can't. I can't introduce you to Sinatra tonight. Jilly just died, oh. and he's not seeing anybody." Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but I'm like in the third row, and he's staring at me, and he's staring at me, and he's singing and staring at me. Sinatra is singing to me. You killed Jilly. Then I suddenly realized I was sitting right in front of a teleprompter. Oh, there you go. There you okay, go. and he was reading everything on the teleprompter, and since the circle star had this, was in a circle, there were like four teleprompters in each corner of the stage. Oh, my God. And I, and I, and he's singing. I get no kick from champagne, Jack. And I look at the teleprompter, and they've written in the word Jack. Oh God, say Jack here. Yeah, Certain yeah. Jack. That's how bad things had gotten. Oh, you know. it's bad. He's old. A few guy. years later, he was dead. But I I can't listen to Sinatra in that era because oh, it's yeah. just terrible. Any oh, al- You want to hear what his peak and you know. Any album after Old Blue Eyes is back. Uh-huh. Is terrible. I mean, he's just terrible. Um, even old Blue Eyes is back. You know, he just he he knew his voice was going. He got out of the business. Remember, he retired. Yep, that was the seventy one. And then he took time to reconnoiter and try to retrain the way he sang. Yeah. So that he could do all this stuff, and he did it. But it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same virtuosity that he once yeah. had. So it's, it's kind like of duets yeah. albums. His voice was gone by then. It just they were kind of useless. So I never liked the duets. Well, there duets. is. I'll tell you, there is a cut that I, I have a copy of the duets album <clears throat> without the duets. Uh, uh, In other words, he just sang the whole songs, and then they inserted. Oh yeah, sorry, they were on different coasts, probably. Yeah, they, they weren't even singing with each other. And so they took the complete track of Sinatra singing, uh-huh. and and somebody got him, and I got a copy of him, and he sounds, it's the last thing he ever recorded. He doesn't uh-huh. sound terrible, uh-huh. you know, because usually if you if you play Sinatra for me, I listen to so much Sinatra, you can play Sinatra for me, and I go, 1957. Wow, you know what the weather was like when it was recorded. Y- y- yeah, yeah. small craft warnings. No, because you could hear as he went on how his virtuosity died sure, you get older, man. Just, and by the time you got to the 80s i'm sorry don't even listen to any of that sinatra he did yeah. an album of songs written especially for frank by rod McEwen. Uh, you remember rod McEwen? gene gene the roses are cuckoo hey gene you nutty bro well uh, 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 he, he fashioned himself to be a poet the poet but he was a te- like this. And he had one of the largest selling books of poetry of all time called Stanion Street and Other Sorrows. How can I remember these things? <laughs> anyway. They cannot see now. Everyone but it was wrong. terrible poetry. It was just terrible. You know, and so, and then he did albums of him doing the poetry, and then he sang. And he put it, and so by this time, Rob McEwen's career was over, but Frank wanted his material because, hey, that's oh, that hip hop yeah. Rob McEwen. Yeah. Oh, it's a terrible album. Oh, um, I think it's called Watertown. Oh, I remember that came around 1970. Oh, it was Frank yeah. trying to be young and hip, like a folk rock album. And it didn't quite ghastly. Ghastly. Yeah. Watertown. Whoa, I, and the living is easy. I have to say it was kind of equaled uh, by uh, Frank trying to sing Light My Fire. <laughs> Hey, you want me to pull it out, baby? You want to see it? <laughs> Frank will show it. Where did it go? Hey, never mind. This age, you don't want to see it. Yeah, right. He, he wanted to be so hip, he pulled it out on stage. Right. Father, yes, son. Well, you know the rest, you old broad. Hey, you're a chick. I'm a guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It's so sad. You know, I mean, it's it's. I feel it myself. You know, I'm 80 years old. I feel that I don't have the chops I once had. Uh, you know? Uh, do I sound like I don't have the chops? Sound like the same guy to me. You know? Yeah, well, well, still, still uh, uh, well then, uh, you know, I'm 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 proof of that adage. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool you all the people all of the time. But if you can do it just once every four years, you get elected. 
Uh, by the way, election's coming up. You're going to go vote? Great. I voted already. You voted already. Uh, by mail. Mailed it in. Give it to Mr. Zip. All the way. Who did you, who did you I, vote for? I'll either get counted or was floating somewhere in the Dead Sea. I don't know where my ballot is Who right did now. you vote for? Ruin your career. Oh, I don't remember. Some old white guy. I don't remember. Ruin, ruin your career and say I voted for Trump. I was, yeah, it was either hair plugs or a comb over. The only plugs. people that Trump has, only stars that Trump has, is Kirstie Alley. And uh, who was the other one that came out for him the other day? James Woods loves him. Huh? Uh, who? James Woods. James Woods is very pro Trump. Oh, really? Pro Trump? Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, oh, Scott Bale. Scott Bale. <laughs> I mean, when you got Scott Bale's vote, you uh, don't have to go any further than uh, that. The You've won. Of the acting world. Yes, Scott hey, Bale. Hey, we've run out of time. I can't see before you know it. Oh, my God. You know, the next time you and I, we do these things every two weeks, and then I run them off one a week. The next time you and I talk will be the day after elections. Oh, well, I have a new elect, a new president, uh, or no, the old president-elect or a new president-elect. Or a, we may not have white, anybody. An old white guy ready to be the next president. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, Stephen Pearl. He's huge, he's huge. You get a vote for him, he's huge. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, you know, that's, oh, we got to turn on my lights here. There we go. Uh, uh, that's uh, Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. It was recorded, as you realized, a couple of weeks ago. And I never got around to it because we did uh, Phil Meyer for two days last week and then one day this week and then whatever. So I had one just sitting around and I was hoping and praying that it wasn't going to be too dated. And except for the last minute, I'm, I'm breathing heavy. I'm t- we're talking about Sinatra and everything else. And I'm going, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And... Uh, all of a sudden, yeah, that was it, you know, that was it. Uh, so uh, we were talking about what was going on, and uh, I'm saying, who did you vote for, and who's going to win, and eh, I did that in the last minute. I screwed up. Anyway, mm. Mm. Well, gee, there are a couple of people here waiting in line to kind of come on with the the old Alex here, as our citizen panel starts to form like crust on uh, onion soup. Uh, let me see here. Um, oh, wow, already. Look at that. Look at that. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Robert Natali is there, and uh, 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 Charlie Wallace is there, and uh, uh, Brian Neary is there, and uh, Adrian is probably off somewhere, right? She's uh, practicing dancing. It's practicing dancing. Is she good at it? Is she good at it? <laughs> she's very good because at it. She's such a hand. Great. You know? Yeah, but you know what? Chris Rock always said, you just got to keep him off the pole. So that's, <laughs> that's one thing. That <laughs> she starts doing these sexy moves, and I'm like, hey. Oh, okay. wait a minute. At her age, she does sexy moves? Uh, yeah, because she's watching Blackpink, and she follows them and this other Korean group. Oh, yeah. I see. So okay. Yeah. So I try to. She's into down. she's into K-pop, is she? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the dancing. Yeah. See, That's old right. Alex does know about such things. Do you know when Ooh, I say so K- hip. K-pop, Robert? What I'm talking about? I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> How about you, Charlie? K-pop? No, I don't have any idea. <laughs> but it's K-pop in Texas. <laughs> now I can tell you about K-pop, but I can't name one single group. Yeah, but I bet you can name like five of them, right, Brian? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So, and the wife loves watching them. Oh, look at this guy! Look at this guy! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they're they're rooting for the Asians, right? I guess so. Yeah. No, actually, you know, uh, uh, K-pop has become a big thing. Korean pop. You wouldn't have ever thought a few years ago that you know they would dominate a lot of the uh, music world, but they do now. Huge, huge, yeah, yeah. yeah when Their they put, dance arrangements are pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, and the videos they have, you know, all the stuff going on in the video. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, haven't you, they pretty much made their their whole career off of those videos? I mean, the videos is what yeah. put them over the top. Yeah, I mean, in Korea, they they really they have. All the kids that want to be stars, and they just they drill everybody, and they're practicing twenty four seven, and you know they come out with these groups. Um, yeah, 
Now, now, South Korea, there's a country that's done pretty well when it came to handling the uh, COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't they? Or are they back having yeah. troubles again? I don't know. Not that I've heard. You don't they know. Were, a lot of those Asian countries, because they shut everything down so quick. Yeah. That's how they did good. But oh, okay. I mean, we, I mean the, the sad thing is we have a president right now that is not talking about it, doing anything about it at all. And he's trying to get these, I don't know. It's just very frustrating. It, Every it, day we have over 100,000 new cases. Well, no. And Today he, it, was a, it was, yesterday I think it was 140,000 in one day, folks. 140,000 yeah. in one day. And Trump's doing Today nothing. it's over 150. Hmm? Today I saw it's over 150. Over 150? Oh, God. Yes, sir. Oh, it just it never and gets Trump any better. Trump doesn't talk about it at all. It's like his... His kryptonite. Oh, die. Look who's joined us. Mark Thorner. Hi, Mark. How you doing down there in uh, Florida? Are you down there in Nipples? Is that where you are? Yep. <laughs> Nipples, yeah. Florida? Yeah. So you had to bring up sing, sing Along With Bitch. Um, sing Along With Mitch. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about... Whenever I get together with Stephen Pearl, we talk about stuff nobody knows what we're talking no, about. No, when you said how many people out there, I'm like meekly raising my... Oh, well, yeah. We, I yeah. yeah, I remember him. It, it was it was maybe the worst TV show in history, the worst set of music albums in history, and that was that was Mitch Miller. That was the kind of crap he believed in, in that he tried to push. And he, as I was saying in the thing with Pearl, he's the guy that ruined Sinatra's career over at uh, Columbia, yeah. because he wanted him to do all these novelty songs like singing with Dagmar with uh, "Mama Don't Bark" or whatever that stupid <laughs> song was. Hello there. Well, hey, we've been joined. We've been joined by owner. The <laughs> owner. <laughs> I'm just going to call you people by whatever name you put up. You know. <laughs> Hello, owner. How are you tonight? Yeah, it's Jason. In case you forgot. I know. I know it's Jason. But you know, people put up all these names, and I go, well, you know, I can change them back here. I can change your name. Thing, so yeah, it's just the name of my computer. J j uh, oh, it is. Oh, yeah. wow. the name of your computer is owner, and you never changed it from that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Call me default setting. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, it, yeah, I mean, like, I get some Seriously. of these up here, and it says like uh, Bob's iPad. Yeah. You know, and you go, what? You know, you can write anything you want to in there. And Brian does on many an occasion. Hello, Jeff. How you doing up there? And can how I, you doing, you, guys? You guys are really infected hey. up there these days. Don't get too near me, okay? <laughs> um, no lunch this week. I canceled my eye th surgery because I I don't want to I don't want to go to a hospital. And when I called the woman at his office and said, "I'm sorry, the way things are going, I don't want to go anywhere near a hospital," uh, she yeah. said to me, "I don't blame you." And so, don't have any room for you. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have they can't have, don't have room for me. It's the eye and ear infirmary, okay, where it's being done, which is part of Mount part of Mount Sinai. But I don't think they moved in any ICU beds into the place, okay. But nevertheless, I don't want to go into a hospital. I don't want to go anywhere yeah. near a hospital. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the latest thing we're trying to do though is trying to find a uh, um, a uh, a prescription plan. For our, you know, for our for our insurance, and do you know what a pain in the ass that is? Yep. I mean, they do not make it easy on you. I mean, getting a a medical plan was no problem. We called this guy up. He was an insurance guy. He said, "Okay, here, go with this." We went with I think the AARP thing, uh, your Plan F, because her company's paying for it, and we don't have to pay another penny for that for that twenty percent. But then it comes to getting the prescription medicine stuff. And my uh, insurance guy doesn't do that, but he does tell you where to go. So he went on to Medicare and he said, well, go with, uh, I can't remember what it was now, with this one plan. And I said, well, what about Express Scripts? Because we were with it and we liked it and it was terrific. And he said, well, they don't say that's the best one. So I, I, we called Express Scripts and talked to them. They were very nice and very helpful. And then this other company I called, which was, uh, God, which one is it? I'm trying to remember now. Um, uh, it, uh, it, Empire, somebody like that, I can't remember now, 
was the best one listed at the top on Medicare. So I went onto their site, and then it said, well, go here to get our Medicare pharmaceutical plan, and it says, administered by Express Scripts. <laughs> and this guy was saying, no, don't use Express Scripts. Go to these people. And it says... <laughs> And But that site, I got on the Express Script site really easily. It was a pain in the ass with the Express Script site for this insurance company. But still, it's administered by, by you know, Express Script. So that's what we're going through. Yes, Jason, you don't have to go through any of this. You're too young for this. No, I just get raped by my employer every month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so wouldn't it be nice if we could get rid of the annually or biannually time change and also the annually redo your insurance every single fucking year? <clears throat> well, here's what happens. I don't know why for, to begin with, I lost my insurance because sag After decided that they wanted to let their older senior performers go off and die, all right? So we had to go looking for a new one, and of course they say, you have to do it during the enrollment period. Now, who came up with this idea? Why can't you just sign up for a plan anytime you want to? Why do you have to wait for the enrollment period? And more than that, and I know you who watch like MSNBC and CNN, you're sick and tired of seeing those ads, okay? But it's because if by November 12th you don't have a new plan, you don't get to have another new plan until the next enrollment period. And I'm going... Who thought this one up? They just didn't want to make it easy for older people. Yes, uh, Charlie, who's an old guy, is probably they, getting it. What? Yeah, they, uh, the insurance company started that because they wanted to lock you in for 12 months. Oh. That was a compromise they made in Obamacare. You know, well, the, no, to... this wasn't part of Obamacare, though. No, this was I, part I've of had Medicare. I've enrollment the entire time I've worked for the, the, where I worked for 20 years. It's always been the same time of year. Really? Why? Yeah. What is that all about? So they want to lock you in for 12 so months. So even if you don't have yeah. Medicare, it's not you have to if you want to go with a certain insurance company. Now when you first go to work for somebody, you can sign up anytime you want to, right? Yeah. But then once you're there, you can only change your plan once every for year. An annual enrollment. Oh. And your employer can only change uh, certain times of the year. They can't change in Jan in July or in April or whatever. They can Jesus, uh, you know, I'm, uh, and then I'm beginning to find out, I think, that if I paid cash for my drugs, it wouldn't cost as much as the insurance. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. And trying to separate these plans and whatever. But we've got until uh, the 9th of Smart Nick Scripts, Martin. What? <laughs> that, that commercial smart scripts martin smart you know, scripts no he's, it, he's it, bitching about the price of his prescriptions and yeah. something app you put on your phone oh oh, oh yeah yeah martin sheen yes yeah, 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 yeah. show the app on your phone and get screwed by the insurance companies again no it just it just it makes no sense to me and and you know i guess it's just they want to get even with us old people you know how old are you robert i've never asked you that are you getting medicare huh 70. 70. So you're getting Medicare. Oh, wow. Yes. So you have to do that enrollment period, right? Uh, um, I get that through my old employer. Through your old employer. So they're still paying for your insurance. In part, we are too, though. Yeah. But, I mean, so far as your prescription plan is concerned, what prescription yeah, plan do the, you have? The advantage is that we take advantage of the group price. Yeah. Oh, okay. All hmm. right. Okay. Yes, Jason. So th that just wants me to remind people who are against Medicare for all. So if there's Medicare for all, you got to remember about people like me and my mm -hmm. age group. Mm -hmm. We'll be paying into it and not use it because that's what I love right now. I'm paying in for my medical. And I don't even go. I haven't even been to the doctor. I went. I did a virtual one time this year. So you know, uh, well, that, how, that, that's how, the benefit about Medicare for all. Yeah, you get certain age groups; they'll mm -hmm. be paying into it for years and years, years and, and years, and, years and, and then years, not yeah. even really use it. Yeah. Well, here, here's <laughs> we my question. Yeah, my question is, Jason, how old are you right now? I just hit the big four zero this year. Just hit the big four zero. Okay. So you know, when I was forty, I didn't. If you asked me who I was insured through, I couldn't tell you. I cared so <laughs> little about having health insurance. You know. Yeah. 
Uh, but then as I got, got to 65, I cared about where my health insurance was coming from. Uh, and I now pay attention to get the HMO, the PPO. Yeah, and, now it's now it's the difference with me between life and death. I mean, if I wasn't insured this last year, I'd probably be having a prostate the size of a go of a baseball, you know. Yeah, be peeing more. Huh? Insurance. I said you'd just be peeing more. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I would have probably been able to get what I needed to take care of the prostate cancer, but I wouldn't have the same great help uh, that I'm I saying, got. Even if your prostate cancer, you didn't treat it because In fact, prostate I'm, cancer is slow growing. My touch, with, more. My, my touch with greatness is that I, uh, uh, you know, I had the same doctor who did my radioactive seeds that did Rudy Giuliani. 40, 20 years ago. I'd be scared now because you might end up reaching down your pants in front of a 14-year-old. Believe me, <laughs> if, if if I had that chance, I would feel lucky. Uh, no, but, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's amazing. Uh, this was the same doctor who said, and he's been around for a long time, and I never once in all the time I met with him never brought it up. I just said to him at one point, you know, I've heard of your reputation, and I'm very impressed. And he probably knew that was code for, I know you saved Rudy Giuliani's life, you motherfucker. You know. Hey, uh, hey where it comes to Rudy, yeah. I heard today that Rudy is prepared to take his case all the way to the Supreme Courtyard by Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> is that yours? No, actually. I wish it was. Every time somebody has a very funny line lately, I, because of the internet, I say, is that yours? <laughs> no, I read it online, you know. Yeah, it would have been even better. Supreme Courtyard by Marriott Landscaping. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, down in Florida is is our old friend uh, 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 Mark Thorner. And Mark, uh, your state did not come through for us once again. Oh. Well. You really thought that was going to happen? Well, really? I, th I thought, you know, you got to get rid is Somehow I, I hope they end communism in Cuba so all those people will go back. You know? <laughs> because they're. Didn't Florida vote for Obama? Uh, Florida. Uh, did they vote for Obama? I can't remember. How, do you remember, Mark? I did. I don't care about anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought they did. As a Mexican, I'll say Cubans are not Latinos. No, <laughs> they're not. No. I, I've said that before. They they, they don't think like the. Uh, they're, they're, most of them are actually Europeans who were they were the they were the property owners in Cuba who, when socialism was coming about, they were going to lose their property because it was going to go to the people. Or they get work. shot, so they got on a boat and came here, and then they wound up mm -hmm. hating communism. And of course, we all know Joe Biden is a raging communist. You know, which maybe they should have came back with for the ads of, you know, maybe socialism isn't as bad. Maybe it's a dictator who won't get out of office. Yeah. That's yeah, bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't get to fascism in their in their, you know, textbook, I guess. In your neighborhood, Mark, how do they feel about the way Trump is comporting himself at the moment? Or don't you talk to anybody? Hey. They, they think this guy is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Really? And you and I, Alex, <laughs> and everyone else here knows the truth, especially those of us that lived in New York. And we saw the shit show that Trump was doing in the 80s. Yeah. It's like, you really want this jerk to be your president? That's your problem. Yeah, but a lot of the people that, down where you live used to live in New York. Yeah, right. Like yeah, well... <laughs> Not in my neck of the woods. Well, now there are more people from New York. I'm seeing more New York license plates. Oh, wow. Really? In uh, my area. No, in a way that's good. It makes me feel like finally, you know. Sanity's coming uh, to the top. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, the thing is, okay. I, I just don't understand somebody thinking that Trump is just great. I, I just, you know, I could say, okay, uh, I understand it if you say, well, he's been good for my pocketbook. Okay. But to say he's great, I mean, to say that that's your morality is is Donald Trump's morality, and that's what you're doing when you vote for him. All, all, all Mark can do is nod his head. I'm saying that the people are listening to the you're audience. You're preaching to the choir here, Alex. Yeah. I mean, um, 
I am not a fan of the guy. I never have been. He screwed over someone I used to know and someone else who was in the construction industry was hmm. also screwed over. Oh, like anybody, I, anybody that worked for him got, got <laughs> it was screwed over. That was not unusual, you know. It, it's, you know, and it goes back to his one-upmanship against the Helmsleys. Oh, and yeah. that's what gets me. It's like, okay, you bastard, you won. What now, you know? Um, yeah. And now what he's trying with Rudy, you know, I used to have a lot of respect for Giuliani. I really did. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people did. I never did. I never had respect. You always for him. hated him, Alex. I always hated him. But yeah, and I know Alex. But um, the criminals are starting to look a little better right now. Alex, there was a, remember Alex. There was a period of time you weren't in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I watched what he did during nine eleven, and I had to say. He's writing the textbook on how to handle something like this. Yeah. And I appreciated him for that and that alone. But when he tried to spend the rest of his life living off that cred, I just couldn't go along with it. But now, yeah, it's, it's like, what planet are these people living on and what they're trying to do? I mean, he and Carrick were two of the biggest crooks in New York City. Yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm, Carrick was at that last meeting. Yeah, you well, know, they caught Carrick. He went to jail. Okay. And he got pardoned by Trump. Remember that? Did he? Did he get pardoned by Trump? He did. Yes, they read up on that case. He got pardoned. He did. Mm. He, and, he got a little jail. Uh, Joe he didn't. He well, he was already out of jail, but he was just pardoned. And, and I don't know. I think he got time shaved off, Alex. I think he got let out. I don't. I don't think he got time. I have to look it up. Don't hold me to it. Well, well, anybody, somebody, go look it up. If I'll look you get it up. A chance, if you, want. you know. Um, but, uh, uh, but honestly, Alex, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'm, I'm really worried now about what kind of a shit storm these bastards are going to try between now and uh, the beginning of the year. Yeah. Well, and he's doing nothing about COVID. So that's even worse than doing something bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I've had I still cannot figure out why are all of these Republicans so afraid of Trump. He still has a lot of power. Yeah, because like going into twenty twenty four, they're true believers. They're cultists. Mm -hmm. They'll do whatever yep. Trump says. Wait, yeah. hold on yeah. a second. Horror shit. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> you know that is great. Are you there? Okay. Well, if he's come on, John. Is that John Larkin? I don't know if it's John Larkin. He usually Orange uses. He comes right on. He usually uses. Yeah. yeah he usually yeah, is, he's good at this. I'm going to get rid of this person because. Yeah. Um, uh, remove. Okay. Uh, do you want to remove horse shit? All right. Okay. Shit's creep. Yeah. Yeah. Love that show. Yeah, I want. You know, I start. I didn't watch it for the longest time, and then I started watching it, and it's pretty damn good. It's just fun. Oh. You know, it's just fun. But yeah, you got to like watch, episodes. I'm telling you folks, you got to watch Queen's Gambit. It's good. Yeah. Best, I'm, I'm loving it. Best series, I think, done in the last couple of years. Just terrific. You know. Uh, but hey, I, huh? I was going to ask you that. I was listening before, Alex. Do you, were you talking about health insurance before? I mean, I was just listening before I told in. Uh, a health insurance? Yes, we were. Because you know what? Funny you said that. I just got a bill. When I was I was telling Chucky when I went for my colonoscopy, I just got a bill from my insurance company. And they're and they and they're charging you up the ass. Well, I'm covered with the whole thing. Take a guess, Alex. How I much had to say it. Okay, what? Take a guess how much it is. Hold a on. colonoscopy? Uh, I, I would say over a thousand dollars, maybe fifteen hundred. Wait a minute. Where are you going to get another colonoscopy? <laughs> what? Yeah. What you, what, Don't I, leave what? us with that wallpaper, please. That was the teaser. That was the teaser. <laughs> He's yeah. doing colon after this commercial. Oh no. Okay. Well, so, uh, I'm saying, I'm saying, from my experience, are you there, Tony? Yeah, thirteen thousand dollars and change. Oh my <laughs> God. To shove a pipe up your ass. They From the me. anesthesiologist, the doctor, the visit, the uh, scope. 
I have the whole breakdown. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold, on hold on a second. Hold on a second. Grand. That's what I mean, the. Now you, you're insured, right? Yes, my God. You think I'm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah of course. Of but wait a minute. Hold on a second. That's what they bill it at. Yeah. Okay. Then thinking, the insurance company, what does, does it say on there what the insurance company is going to pay? Oh, well, they, I'm covered for the whole thing because it's a wellness exam. No, oh. but where are you going? I got to find my bill. I dropped that in my envelope. I have the balance. I'm going to keep it. Maybe I can write it off on my taxes. I'm not sure. No, I, no, I no. You can't off. write it off on your taxes because the insurance is paying for it. He, he said he had a forty dollar copay. Oh, you show your pay? ass on the video. Oh, forty dollar oh, copay. The thir- does the thirteen grand include the eight by tens in the wallet size? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you buy the camera? Did they make you buy the camera after? <laughs> My last colonoscopy, Medicare was billed twenty five hundred dollars for. Alex, you give me the breakdown of everything here. Well, wait a minute. Charlie just said his was what twenty five hundred is 2, what they. Twenty five hundred dollars. That was two years ago. And that was Where what. That's what they charged. That's what Medicare paid. Oh, that's everything what Medicare paid. paid. Okay. Yeah. So what happens is your insurance company will wind up paying considerably less than that. Oh, shit. You see, but they charge at that higher rate because I guess there's something like when they accept the number that the insurance company, like, says $2,500, they take the rest of the money and use it as, as a, a tax loss. deduction, as a yeah. loss. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, yeah, they give me a breakdown of everything. Oh, I'm telling you, do you know how much my, for my radiation for my prostate and followed mm-hmm. by the seeds being implanted in my prostate. You know how much that came to? If you, if, if what they build? 15,000. What? 75,000. Oh, you're coming closer, 32. Mark. Try 110,000. Try $110,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. And I think the Medicare paid about 17,000. Yeah. And the rest was paid off by. Most of the rest. I had to, I had a copay there of I don't know something like two hundred dollars or something. So you mean I had to pay seventeen thousand dollars in my taxes while your lazy unemployed ass didn't have to pay nothing? <laughs> hey, we all had to do it, Jason. We all had to do it. Hey, Jason. For years, Jason. I put money in to Social yeah. Security. Okay. That, that that's why my whole argument. And by the way, one, also one also let plan. me let me add. That I do pay for Medicare. It mm, comes out of my Social Security check every month. I don't know how much is it, Mark. How much do we pay for uh, Medicare? Excuse me, yeah, uh, sneeze. Three thousand dollars a year. I, I'm not quite there yet. Now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Robert's always good on this. Robert, how much? How much are they taking out for our Medicare? Oh, I have no idea. I, really I, I, I thought it was something. The last time I looked, it was one hundred and twenty dollars a month. Yeah, so I, I think it's one hundred and forty in twenty twenty. Oh, really? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, well, good. Your premiums went down by ninety percent, didn't they? Um, the, heck no. No, isn't that what Trump was saying? That the oh, 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 what Trump said. Yeah. <laughs> we're still we're still waiting for his plan. And it'll go away by Easter. <laughs> He'll have it twenty twenty four. That's his, that's, that's his platform. That, that's where he was kind of happy he lost. He doesn't have to show his plan. You know, if Trump is Trump is making a big mistake if he thinks that he's going to start a TV network online and anybody's going to want to watch it. No, he I figures I got I got I got seventy million uh, votes. That means seventy million people are going to want to watch my network. Wrong. I agree. No, no, Mo- I how agree. many of them were voting just because they were Republicans? You know. Uh, and if you go on TV, they've had enough of you. You've you've overstayed your. They have not. Up everybody. They love him. Yeah, uh, Robert. Jason, I agree with you. The young do pick up the tab for the older people, but why stop with health insurance? I've been driving over fifty years, and I've never been in a single accident. I'm picking up the tab for people that go out and right. smash their car because they're half drunk. For no, years I, and years I, and years. I, I have to disagree because when it's I was 16 years theory. old, I was paying $250 a month for PLPD for insurance on my car. Really? I don't get. I don't get your point. What's your? What's you're your point? saying that you're you haven't had accidents on a car insurance and you've been paying yeah. car insurance. And well, no, what he's saying is he, when he, I was a kid, he, PLPD. No, 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 no. That has, it's not what he's saying, Jason. What he's saying is. 
He's had in, he's been paying insurance all these years. Never had an accident, but other people I, have had tons I, of I them, and it. he's kind of but, paying for them. But that's what I'm saying. When I was a kid, I was paying a lot yeah, higher. A lot so did I. Yeah, so did I. For yeah, so did I. So did I, because I people too. in that age group were more likely to have accidents. But I didn't have accidents. All right, neither and did I. I but both of rate. us then were picking up the tab but, for but people that had accidents regularly. But that, that's still the same, y'all. I'm paying a higher tab rate now because I'm not using my health insurance. I'm, I agree with it. You know, I'm, I'm going to use it later too. on. I'm just paying now for what I'm going to no, use later on. I'm a, yeah. Jason, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying why stop at health insurance? It's that way with insurance, period. Yeah, right. You know, like if you're it, careless out and you everybody. start a house fire, that insurance company is going to pay for that house. Well, I didn't start a, a, a fire, but they got to make their money up somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's that's the game. It's a pyramid. But, but that's the whole point of insurance, period, is you try to spread the cost over everybody. It's a pyramid scheme. The whole thing is. <laughs> but if you get a bigger base on the bottom of the pyramid, you know, it, it doesn't hurt as much. Well, that's they, why you include well, everybody in paying into Medicare. Or if you exactly. have universal health care nationwide, then it's no Same thing. longer an issue for you or for me. Same thing, yeah. And that, that that's where people need to get away from the free health care. It's not free. Free. No. We're all paying for it. Everybody is paying for it. Rich yeah. and poor are paying for it. Yeah. But I we're also agree. paying for agree. these executives to make millions of dollars a year that you would not be paying for if we had Medicare for all. And that's that right. Would be cheaper. Well, what we yep. should do is we should go back to what we had before Reagan, and that was that insurance companies couldn't make a profit. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, they were not allowed to be profit making organizations, and they weren't. But that, that's what you'd get if you had Medicare for all. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm saying is, boo-hoo, everybody goes, what's going to happen to the insurance companies? Who Fuck cares? the insurance Who companies. Did you hear me, folks? I just demonetized this show tonight. Fuck hey, the, the insurance company. I don't company. want to pay the bill, Alex. <laughs> Good, I'll demonetize it further. That's the insurance companies can suck my cock. Oh, Alex. okay. All right. You know, and, and would I you... would feel bad for the people who are working in the offices and behind the scenes for all these insurance companies who might lose their job. But at the same time, the government's going to have to hire you because it's going to be more claims being processed and they're going to have to have more people right. doing the work. That's right. It's going to be work every, for everybody. There might even be more work. So instead yeah. of you working That's for true. the for profit insurance company, you might actually yeah. have to become unionized and work for the government and make more money and have better benefits. Jason's <laughs> Jason's got his hand up. Hello, Jason. Uh, not Jason. Brian. Brian <laughs> Ludwig. Well, was that Jason that just spoke? That was Jason who just spoke. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 he's more compassionate than I am. If they wind up, if we do wind up somehow with uh, a single pair. First of all, it should be labeled as people, people, the American citizens. You have to pay your fair share. It shouldn't be labeled as free. I agree there. It's bad marketing. Um, but also, as far as the health care workers for the health insurance companies are concerned, if we do, if we were to switch to a single payer system and all of them were to go out of work, worst case scenario basis, I still wouldn't feel bad for them. Because as far as I'm concerned, as far as I can tell, they're just aiding and abetting the enemy. So they can go fuck themselves, too. Well, I, you know, it got me mad a little bit. I, uh, it tell me that I'm, I'm wrong on this. But when COVID first wrong. hit and businesses were impacted, uh, the airlines got a big chunk of money. Yeah, and I'm, go- I'm going, too. what for? And they, it's not like they kept everybody. It's not like they didn't let people go, you know. Yeah, yeah uh, I don't know which one. Both Brian hands went first. up. Huh? Okay, Brian. Yeah, just uh, just like I said last time, mm-hmm. weeks ago, mm-hmm. I'll never forget. I was at a friend's house. Actually, it was a guy I hooked up with, but uh, his uh, his aunt. He showed me pictures of his aunt who worked for a health insurance company. Who had, like, was she hot? Most of, she, was a, she was a bitch in, a, in the sense that all I saw were pictures of her at one executive dinner wearing the other, going to another party, one shot where she went on a skiing trip and all this, and my blood was just Well, we're still break. asking you the essential well, question. Was, was she, she hot? hot? With the ass, you know. <laughs> we see, Jay, uh, Brian is not the guy to ask. Hey, I'm sure Brian looks at asses a lot, just the same as we do. Yeah, but they're not, um, 
<laughs> yeah, I look at one on. I, I look at one when I watch C-SPAN all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Many asses you're looking at when you oh, watch yeah. C-SPAN. Shitheads. Yes, too. Jeff. I've been to uh, a couple of different countries outside the United States, mm -hmm. and if and I had to go to the hospital mm -hmm. just to get my blood checked and whatever, go see a hospital, go see a doctor or whatever, and. I go, well, where do I go and how do I pay and this and that? I said, pay? What are you talking about? Yeah. It's free. There was somebody, I, I saw an interview with some guy who, no got, who got sick in England. And in England, if you get sick in England, they take care of you, even if you're yeah. from another country. And as he was leaving, he said, well, where do I pay? And they say, what? Where's your cashier? Sure. And they said, we don't have a cashier in this yeah, hospital. It wasn't that Michael Moore, and I thought they yeah. did find the cashier, and they actually paid the patient? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He didn't pay. He got money back. <laughs> yeah, because you had to take a taxi ride or something yes, to the hospital yes, to reimburse yes, you for that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, that's amazing. But, but that's, that's what I'm saying to you. Uh, Medicare for all, you know, I'm the age group that I'm not going to the hospital. My wife's the age group. She's not going to the hospital. We can still be paying into it. My kid, okay. he's not going to the hospital. We're not paying it. You know, we're paying into it, but we're not receiving. Charlie? By the time I was 40 years old, I had had four surgeries already. You don't have to get sick. You can get injured. Yeah. That's the unexpected car accident. You can get injured and run up thousands of dollars worth of medical bills. <clears throat> Now, uh, Brian, where you work, your company takes care of your medical insurance, right? Yes, one of the one of the few, very yeah. few uh, yeah. school bus companies that actually do that because the other ones are contractors. And well, you can get health insurance through those contractors. I worked for one for five years, uh, but you're paying out the ass for yeah. it. So How about you, the other Brian? You privatized, or are you part of the school district? Uh, I believe I'm. It's part of the school. We're in with the teachers and oh, okay. staff. Brian, uh, Brian yeah. Murray. Uh, yeah, yeah, they take care of me, and then I, I pay addition for the kids. You pay for the kids? Yeah, they that's cool. That. What, they won't yes. take care of the whole family? They used to before when we were a smaller company, but now that we went to Dana, her now it's changed a little bit. Now that they make more money, they won't pay as much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these Bye, guys are making you. a lot of COVID. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, my wife's company is going to pay for our insurance. But, you know, the part of our insurance we don't even charge them for is we don't charge them the money we pay uh, uh, from our, in our, into our Social Security every month for, uh, for Medicare. So, you know, we do pay something. Um, but with this new insurance, it's going to cost about $309 a month. But we get everything taken care of. We don't have to pay a penny. Yeah. So I plan on getting all kinds of cancer next year. <laughs> Don't even joke about that. You know, I, I well, I was I was going to get these eyes done because while the SAG after thing was still in play, and the, of course it, it will be taken care of if I get Isn't it. Isn't that done. what you were getting fixed? Was the SAG after? The SAG after the. Yeah, <laughs> the but no, the th it, it wasn't these. It was just the lids. Okay, but anyway. Uh, so, I mean, I can do it. I'll do it uh, because Medicare will cover it, so the insurance company has to cover it. And I'll do it after the first of the year. It doesn't really matter. In fact, I'll probably wind up paying less because I won't have any copay under this new insurance. So, But, it, it, you know, it's, it's just that I think that when, we get old, when people get old in this country, uh, other countries say, hey, you know, you were a citizen for such a long time and you helped uh, build this country and you helped pay the taxes and you helped uh, doing what you're doing. Here, 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 old person, here's what you get. And among other things, in England, I was told you get two weeks vacation in another country <laughs> just as a thank you, you know. Well, we don't res we don't respect people of age here. Most European we don't respect people. Period, unless it makes a certain amount of money. Right, right. Um, but um, gee, we're getting to see Jason's house for the first time. We live in a rapacious oligarchy, as Jimmy Dore says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Furthermore, in terms of politics, in terms of our political leanings, and our duopoly, oh, from, yeah. duopoly okay. we're the adult children of alcoholics. So. Uh, uh, I should ask Brian, Brian uh, Ludwig. 
Uh, how'd you feel about the election since we haven't talked to you since the election took uh, place? I've been meaning that uh, I just had other shit going on in my life. But uh, oh, don't get me wrong. The lesser of the two evils yeah. did prevail. But, uh, you know, this, uh, from my, the sources I watch and listen to and read, they all uh, seem to be thinking that uh, Biden is of the mindset that he can revert things back to the way they were in 2012. And if he really thinks that he can do that, uh, he's in for a crude awakening. Because, uh, I don't I don't think he believes that. Really? Uh, I think he believes that he can only do what he can do. OK, I, I hope he does a con makes a concerted effort from a progressive stance yeah. to uh, reach out to the more than 68 million people this time who also voted for his opponent. More people voted for Trump. This, remember, more people voted for Trump in 2020 than they did in 2016. Yeah, but there also wasn't the volume of voting at that time. Yeah, but but also, true. also remember that Biden won by more votes than anybody in presidential history. Because we had a higher participation rate across yeah. all sides right. since 1900. Right. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, that six, those 68 million people, they ain't going away. I still see Trump. Well, with Trump I, I think I think away. some of them are going to go away uh, <laughs> because they are they're not people who are permanently on one side or the other. They're on the side that they feel and they perceive is doing something for them. And yeah, well, if Biden can somehow give them enough stuff that they feel that they've gotten something out of Biden, you know, they're not going to go back to Trump. It's like I was saying with a Trump television network. I mean, he figures he's got 70 million viewers. No, he doesn't. Hardcore Bush, uh, Trump fans, maybe 10 million, you know, and not, they're not going to watch 24-7. He thinks he's going to put Fox out of business is what he thinks. Well, and he's not. I think he could start his own. He could start a third party and really fuck the uh, Republicans up. Well, that's OK by you know. me. He yes, did it Jeff. before Jeff. as a reformer. He lost to Pat Buchanan in 2000, but you know he yeah. ran. He tried to run as a reform candidate. Yeah, Je uh, Jeff. Let's remember all the businesses that this guy's had oh, yeah. and have gone down and lost. Yeah, and he'll yeah. probably start some other companies, bring in a whole bunch of investors or whatever, and guess what? He'll take yeah. the money, and then the company will go. He, he says he's going to, in 2024, he might run again. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. yeah, but he's got loser's breath now. You know, it's not like he's he getting older and, yes. and, and out of better shape. It, 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 it better, he never has been in shape in recent years. Well, <laughs> I know. But he's Hello, Kevin. How have, you been, how have you been dealing with the current landscape? Oh, same old shit, just riding it out, you know. Yeah. Like he says, it is what it is, but he don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> well, didn't he say that? Well, he said that back when uh, when COVID, yeah. Yeah, said, it is what it is. Yeah, well, Trump, well, it is what, what it the, is. That's what the election is. It is what it is. Well, the Republicans... Like next week, it's going to disappear, right? Yeah, yeah it was supposed yeah. to go away on November 4th. Well, yeah. what, I'll tell you what's happening. I'll tell you what's happening. Uh, a lot of Republicans are starting to kind of turn against him. It's not they're turning against him. They're just telling him, look, Biden won. Get used to it. He needs the information that he's supposed to get so he knows how, what to do and what not to do. And you're depriving him of information that's in the best interest of the United States for him to have. And they're saying, we're, we don't like the idea that you're holding this back. I mean, I was saying last night, you know what they're not, what they're holding back from him? He's been getting mail from foreign dignitaries that go to the State Departments that are going to be passed on to the president, and they're not giving it to him. I mean, come on. Vindictive little shit, ain't he? Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah no, think? well, because he didn't, because Biden didn't win. And the GAO is not giving him funds for transition until it's a sure thing that he won the election. Five million votes. Yeah. Isn't that enough to make you believe he won this election? You know, Trump could be doing something a little bit better, too, as far as the way he's handling this. He could be saying, look, I am contesting stuff 
and I'm not going to start doing this until this is resolved. But he's not doing that. He's just acting like a little bitch. Yeah, yeah all his people are saying that, but he's not. Right. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Charlie. Yeah, and you know this is all bullshit because he's contesting Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania wanted to count votes that came in as late as, as November the, the 6th as long as they were postmarked by November the 3rd. He thinks that's bogus and we shouldn't count those votes. But in North Carolina, they were still counting votes today that came in by that were postmarked November the 3rd. And he's, he won North Carolina, so he isn't, he's not complaining about that at all. Our county is still counting votes, and we're a little county and 60,000 people. We're still counting votes because... We're still getting, we're not getting them in, but there's a lot of adjudication going on right yeah, now. Yeah, but that old lady who uh, adds them up down at the library is probably taking a long time. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of them that have to be torn open and they got to be flattened out and then they got to be looked at. And then, they're oh, which one did he check <laughs> yeah, off? Yeah. yeah. Thank God there are no chads. Yes, uh, Jason. I think, it's, I think it's just slow torture. They're torturing the shit out of them. Yeah. Jason. <laughs> Brian's first. Oh, Brian was first? Brian. Yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, two things or three things. The one that dovetailed with what Jason said earlier regarding what uh, Trump should do to, uh, you know, that, that. Here's the best. Here's the most realistic. Well, here, here's the best thing you could do. Just say I'm done and leave and uh, let Biden step in now, not January 21st. Just get the hell out of the White House. Yeah. He can go fuck himself. Take his uh, crooked family with him as well. As far as the. Uh, Mail-in ballots are concerned. On a more serious note, uh, didn't uh, wasn't there a judge, a, a Trumper judge, that uh, sided with him just today or just like la yesterday um, that uh, said that the the, the, the uh, results received today or like yesterday are invalid or should be invalidated? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Yesterday, yeah. Well, they're only, they're only supposed to be valid until Friday. Last but Friday. all of this can be attributed to the gutting for the thirty for the last thirty years, but especially under Trump because he like poured gasoline on the fire here. Uh, but the gutting and dismantling of the United States Postal Service, exactly. yeah. which is bullshit. Okay, I want to bring up something new. Oh yeah, quickly, Jason. Yes, Jason, he's frozen. His name. <laughs> Are you frozen, Jason? Are you there, Jason? He's uh, very he, frozen. Yes, Kevin. <laughs> No, he froze. Go ahead. Yeah, everybody, put your hand up like this. It oh, looks nice. hiding. No normal. He's hiding from the wallpaper. <laughs> I see. Okay, well, he'll call back. I'm sure that he's just got a problem there. Um, um, I have I have a story I want to bring up here and see how you feel about it. Uh, have you seen this fight that John Legend is currently having with uh, Mark Cuban? Mark Cuban no. posted the following on the, on Twitter. And let's see what you think about this, because there are two two lines of thought on this. For those considering donating, uh, in fact, let me just uh, show people uh, the the uh, uh, thing. For those considering donating to rep Republicans or Democrats in the Georgia Senate runoffs, can you please reconsider and donate that money to your local food bank and organizations that can help those without food or shelter? Let's put Americans in need above politics. Okay. okay. Then you got John Legend writing back. I get that politics is annoying and contentious, but the bottom line is that the Senate flipping would be far more impactful than food bank donation. We need yep. massive stimulus aid to individuals and small businesses. Government needs to do this. Charity isn't sufficient. Uh, and John Legend said, that being said, I'll be doing both. And Mark Cuban wrote back, Let's go all the way. Stop donating to charity. Give those dollars to politicians because one party will solve all our problems. Come on, John. There's a point of diminishing returns on political ad spend, and there's no diminished returns when it comes to feeding the hungry. Uh, anybody got a comment about that? Yeah, Mark Cuban is being too simplistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And? And? Uh, do you have anything more to say about it? Or, or yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll be glad to give the food banks, and I have it in the past once this uh, election is over with, but it'll benefit the hungry a lot more to give the Senate in the hands of the Democrats 
than to leave it in the Republicans. They haven't done shit for anybody for the last six years. Well, you see, I dis kind of yeah, over. I disagree with Cuban. I mean, I think that uh, right now a lot of money has to be poured in there to make sure these people win. I think, yes. but I agree with John Legend. You can do both. Mm -hmm. You know, if, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, if I were Cuban, I would say, okay, here's my plan. If you're going to give 20 bucks to the Republicans and the Democrats, give 20 bucks to a food bank as well. In other words, double down. Uh, and that will solve the, solve the problem. Anybody else have a comment on that? Uh, I guess. I, I, think, uh, I think we're doing that already. You're doing what already? Giving out some money to the politics and some of the money to uh, poor people who need money for food. Well, you know what we do, though, and I, uh, I'll get to you in a second, Brian Ludwig, is, is that we uh, give inordinate amounts of money to campaigns. I mean, how, much, how many billions of dollars was spent on this election? What a waste of money. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be able to raise money at all. The government should give each of the people running a certain amount of money and that's the amount of money you have to use to run with and shorten the election cycle down, too. Yes, Mark. You know, there's one thing, question I've always had. What happens to the money that's not used? <laughs> no, uh, there is you, none. Yes. Yeah, you know, that's why it's such a crooked game. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And both those guys should just shut the fuck up and do, just do something. Don't go on social media. Because that's like, to me, you're verbally masturbating. You oh. know, it's like, I don't care, Cuban. I don't care about Mr. Legend. It's like, go do stuff. Don't, yeah. don't, don't brag. Don't be, uh, oh, I'm on a high mountain here. I'm going to talk down to people. Fuck that shit. Yeah, but I'm still, still, that. still, <coughs> excuse me, there are people... Making an or is spending an ornament. An or an ornament. Wait a minute, what's going on down? Huh? Oh, very funny. What? <laughs> you haven't you haven't seen it yet, have you? What? He's frozen again? Not quite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. A good one, so, Jason. He, he, here's one thing that like I, I'm pissed that I forgot my lost train of thought before I got cut off. But um, here's one thing that's going on in my head right now about with Trump's um, running for saying, I want to recount everything. I don't think it's really about that. I think because they said that there is something in there with the, the fine print that he can also use. He's trying to fight all of this shit and he's still trying to raise money. His campaign's trying to yeah. raise money, but he can use it to pay off campaign debt. Well, no, yeah. that's what he did. That's the I, biggest thing. Uh, Phil, that's all he's Phil, doing. Phil sent me a mailer he got from the Trump campaign saying we're trying to raise money to fight the, uh, the uh, false voting in all the various states and so on. And uh, at the very bottom, in small print, it says that, something like 50 50 percent of this can go to pay off our campaign debt, which so, I am, understand it's in debt. The Republicans are in a great deal of debt right now. Good, six hundred million. This is one last. Is it six hundred million? That's what I've heard. Really? What What do you say, Robert? It's his one last con on his way out the door. Yeah. yeah. Well, he just wants to pay off his debt, make the American people pay it off for him. Exactly. And he'll have fools that donate. Right. It's already happening. Yes, uh, 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 Mark. Yeah, but the other thing, guys, if you don't think that there's some very interested parties that work for the Southern District of New York mm. um, waiting to serve up papers... I want a front row seat for that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, but how hard is it to indict a former president? In other words, yes, I know he is now able to be sued and everything else. We'll find out, Alex. But, but uh, I'm, I'm getting a cough drop here. Uh, but uh, the question I have is... Uh, even though you can, would people want to? Well, you know, <laughs> have, 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 have other countries. I'll put my hand up on the list of you, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll put it up for yes too. We'll all put our hand up and freeze it. 
for yes. There we uh, go. But the fact of the matter is that that uh, uh, other country, you know, other countries, do they do that? Have they arrested presidents after they've left office for one thing or another, or do they just say, "Look, let it go. He's out. He's gone." You know. Yes, yeah, uh, the countries that do their yeah. not not really places you want to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's very well put. Yeah. Here comes Horace shit. Here, here comes Horace shit again. Shall I try and admit him yeah. here? Let's see who Horace is. Um uh, no uh, oh there he is. Okay. Oh who who is this? Who uh, who Horace shit. I don't recognize you. Who is it? Are you there? Just, Hello. Just, hear us? Yeah, we can. Can you hear us? Can you hear? Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. This it, is Horace. No, it's not. <laughs> no, who is it? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you uh, hailing from? I am uh, from uh, Deutschland. Oh, you're, so that he, might be his real name. His name might really be Horace Shit. One of my Yeah. Where are you in Germany? I'm in uh, Northeast Bavaria. Really? I am a, I'm a government employee working at an army base in Northeast Bavaria. So, my question to you would be, as somebody from another country tonight... What do you think of what's going on here in the United States? What do people there think about what's going on? Uh, personally, I think my name says it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, what, what do people, what, what, what do the people you work with and so on think about what's going on in the United States? Or are you just not paying attention to it? I'm sure you are. Oh, my, I uh, only have one current co-worker. We work in a small lab here uh, Mostly, uh, we calibrate electronic equipment and things of that sort. And I only have one current employee. We were a three man lab, but uh, one of our guys retired mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. So it's just the two of us right now. And we're both pretty much uh, in agreement on politics. Yeah. Uh, uh, we think it's pretty much a travesty what's going on uh, post election. Yeah. With our uh, dear leader <laughs> denying that he actually lost the popular vote and the uh, uh, just lost the election, but won't win a bit. Yeah. Uh, how's how's the press reacting to this in in Germany? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a little audio problem uh, hearing you. Yeah. In how how <laughs> is. How how is uh, how how is the um, um, how, how is the press reacting to it over there? Over here, yeah. Uh, well, I mostly watch the BBC, and they're pretty much laughing at Trump <laughs> uh, <laughs> and his shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. How was Oktoberfest? <laughs> How was Oktoberfest, somebody asked. He's having audio He's issues. He's having so. audio issues. Huh. Well, listen, Horace, just uh, if you can, you can jump in whenever you want to, but uh, we're, apparently you're having some trouble hearing us, right? Yeah, I'm hearing you and the uh, other people talking at the same time. I don't know how to fix this. I'm new at this sort no, of well, thing. Well, the, these never... people are all talking at the same time because we're having a discussion. Is the there... the panel. Yeah, no, I'm hearing I'm hearing other voices as you're talking. Oh, as I'm talking. If you have YouTube on, mute that tab oh, on YouTube. That's what it is. If you're have, watching us on YouTube, hit the mute. Yeah, hit the mute tab. Hit yeah. the mute tab on YouTube. And not on Zoom. On the, on YouTube. Are you watching it on, on YouTube? YouTube? Uh, yeah, this like I said, this is the first time I've done this sort of yeah. thing. So yeah. I'm, uh, well, um, either, either that or if you're watching it on YouTube, if you're watching it on YouTube, just get rid of YouTube. Oops. No, I'm not watching on YouTube. I just uh, logged into GabNet, uh, logged into the Zoom meeting. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know what that's all about. But anyway. You got any other tabs? Uh, uh, yeah. 
Uh, yes, uh, Robert. I want to go back to Mark's point earlier about the Southern District of New York. Listen, nobody would be happier to see Trump get locked up than I would. However, can you hear Trump loyalists already complaining that this is politically motivated, even though Biden will have had nothing to do with it? It'll appear that the Democrats have been guilty of something that we've been accusing him of, locking up his political opponents for all this time. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm saying that's going to be the perception. You know, my thing, who cares? Flush them yeah, out. Neither do I, but them. you know that that's going to happen. Let's deal with them. Okay. Time, deal with them. I couldn't agree with you more. Let it happen. All of it. Well, you know, there was a reason why why uh, Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon, in spite of the fact that he hadn't been charged with any crime, but he pardoned him for anything he might have done, was because he just wanted the nightmare behind us, you know. And I don't know that I disagreed with that, because why why just beat a dead horse? We got rid of Nixon. He left. <laughs> goodbye. We'll leave it at that. Yes, Charlie. Well, that, there is a difference. You, how's how's it, that, Robert? Oh, no, oh it's plenty yeah. different. The the acts that Nixon was guilty of took place while he was in the White House. In the case of Trump's malfeasances that the Southern District of New York are after him about, these are things that he did as a common citizen. Well, that's correct. That is absolutely correct. But all I'm saying is, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I have to agree with that. Uh, Charlie and then uh, then Brian uh, Ludwig. Yeah, my, my point is when the fact that Nixon got off without any punishment is why George W. Bush was willing to do what he did. And the fact that and he went further than Nixon. He started a fucking war in, in all the other crap that the, the W did. So he got off because Obama said we want we won't live in the past. We're going to go forward. So that's why Trump he he goes even further because he knows he's not going to get punished for what he's doing as a president. Every time we let one of these assholes off, the next guy is going to be even worse. Emboldened. Well, you know you can argue about what Bush did or didn't do, you know, uh, 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 but. Uh, what's happened under Trump is an entirely different thing. I mean, I think they're actually, we're going to find funds missing. You know, I think it's, go, it's going that deep and it's that bad. Tax fraud. Hmm? Tax fraud. Tax fraud. Well, tax fraud. $720. Treason. You think he hasn't been telling Putin every single shit, the, the national security thing that we, we have? This is what we're this is what we're worried about. This is what our, our intelligence community is worried about, is that Trump knows a lot of stuff. Well, he knows everything. Okay? If he paid attention. I don't know if he did. Yeah, you but, say he knows. But he knows everything. And he has a lot of debt. And Deutsche Bank has announced you know what Deutsche Bank is, don't you, Horace? <laughs> um, Deutsche Bank uh, has said that they are going to sell off mm -hmm. his debt. And if they sell it off to, say, some country that wants to buy his debt, and now that country goes, okay, you want your debt eradicated? Tell us some stuff. I'm sure Trump will be more than happy to tell them. Plain and simple. And then our intelligence community is worried about that because they've always been worried about him because he can't keep a damn secret. You know, so, yes, uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, one is dovetailing with uh, what Charlie said. It's a case of power protecting power. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's Trump, Nixon, uh, Obama, Clinton, or Biden. Number two is, uh, uh, no. number two is uh, uh, also going back further, uh, earlier in this discussion, uh, mm -hmm. is, is uh, I thought that the uh, Democratic control of the Senate was all but annihilated. It's going to stay in Republican hands. You guys are yeah. talking about Georgia. Georgia, yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought, it was over. 
I thought it was already declared that they're no, there's no, 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 no. They're run run yet. Oh, oh, they're having to run two of the races there over again for two centers. For two centers. Oh, and also, I remember the third one, uh, probably the most important thing. Pardons can only be made on crimes committed on the federal level. Federal now, yes. New York and New Jersey, those are apparently local. have shit on Trump that yes. they could charge him with on the state level. So that's right. Yeah, we shall wait. We shall see. See, grab what? your lawn chair and your popcorn. Well, I think he wanted to keep being president because it kept him out of jail. That's what yeah, I think. Someone said on this program a while ago, maybe a year or so, or ago, debtor's prison, involved, one or the other. That the statute of limitations. If he were to get a second term, the statute of limitations on those we'll state out. charges oh, would have run out. But now they're they're, they're not going to run out because he's not going to get a second term. I wonder Unless if because he has a certain uh, immunity from prosecution while he's president. If uh, they can just say, okay, it's off the books for about eight years, but we can go back and revisit it, and the time just, the meter starts running. Yeah, well, they haven't done that yet, and the Republican Senate sure isn't going to do that. Well, well, like you all said, he knows stuff, and it could, it just, and like I said, it's power protecting itself. The, the duopoly, uh, the Crips and the Bloods, they all have their, in, they have a mutual interest in maintaining the illusion of, well, yeah. control. Yeah. Um, let me see here. I just want anybody. I want to ask uh, Horace a question. Um, how about your prime minister, prime minister there, Angela Merkel? Uh, has she said anything about this? Not that I know of. I I, uh, I don't pay that much attention to the German news because I don't speak very much German. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, Bavaria is is different than Germany, anything. right? I'm sorry. Bavaria is different than Germany, right? It's it's like no, uh, it's a state in Germany. Yeah, it's, it's part of Germany. Germany. Southern, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's so large, where are you large, from originally? Large part of uh, pretty much southeastern Germany. Mm -hmm. Where are you from originally? Where are you from originally? Somebody asked. Where am I from? Yeah. Uh, originally from Tennessee. Originally from Tennessee. Small town called uh, Johnson City. Uh, well, it was a small town when I was growing up, about 30,000 mm -hmm. population. It's burgeoning to about. And how'd you wind up? I thought he had a southern accent. How'd you wind up yeah. in Bavaria? Uh, I've been working Work. for the government on this particular job okay. uh, for All about right. 15 years now. And uh, I was on the verge of retirement, but the opportunity came up to take this assignment in Germany. And I had been here before when I was in the Army back yeah. in the 70s, and I loved it over here. So I, I decided to go ahead and take advantage of the opportunity and uh, spend mm. about another, my last three years here before retirement. Oh, cool. Well, listen, I hope you'll call us again and also figure out, did you finally figure out what that other sound was that was going on? I think it has something to do with my... Uh, Headphones, headset set up here. I'm going to try to hook up some speakers to my computer yeah. tomorrow and see if that works a little okay. better. But give us a call we, again. We'd uh, love to hear I'll from try. you. It's a little difficult for me because it's uh, 5 a.m. 5, almost 6 a.m. Well, here the in next time you get up early, give us a call. <laughs> anyway, hey, that's our theme being played right now, meaning the program is coming to a close. A lot of people tonight. Robert. Good having you here, as always. Charlie, always great having you here. Brian, you're a little quiet tonight, but uh, mm -hmm. we always like seeing that face filling out that square. And I suppose Adrian isn't here tonight, right? I just had to slap. I just, yeah, she's crying in bed now. Oh, I, she's crying in bed? You made yeah, her cry? She was bad. She was very bad right now, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's not always angel. Daddy is being daddy. And uh, let's see here. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for calling us. Uh, call us more. We love having you on. It's just, you know, good to see your face. Uh, uh, Jeff, it's great to see your face all the time. Okay. Uh, 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 Tony, it's great seeing your face, except when it then suddenly turns into horrible, hideous wallpaper. Um, Brian. Good to have you here again. And uh, Kevin, it's always a pleasure. Jason, love seeing you here. And our, our new caller, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Horace Shit. 
not not his real name i'm sure everybody give a big wave goodbye and i'll give you a big wave goodbye back okay there they go ladies and gentlemen that's our citizen panel for tonight okay that's uh, that's all she wrote uh, uh next is the uh the exchange the exchange the intersection with jack bishop over most of the same gab net uh, I will be back again tomorrow night uh, at uh, 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask! Wear a mask!